friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, everybody. Glad to have you here on this fabulous spring day in April. And uh, what a joy it is to be able to worship the Lord. Amen? Good thing. So for all of you who are upstairs in the balcony, I did not get a chance to shake your hands. Uh, all of you, I got some of you, but... Uh, I greet you nonetheless. Glad you're here. And uh, we don't say it as, as often as we should, but those who uh, uh, help us with the media and those who help with the music, uh, what a joy it is to be able to have those persons here. They do such a great job. Thank you so much for your help. We appreciate it. I got a couple announcements to uh, share with you this morning. First of all, we want to welcome those who are joining us on live stream. Glad that you can participate in this way and just know that we also do rebroadcast at Mediacom Channel 3 or Vast uh, I guess it's called Blue Peak now uh, Channel 3 uh, during the week Mondays and Tuesdays our adult Bible study has two more weeks uh, next week and the week after that and Randy would love to have you stop in even if you haven't been there before uh, you can still pick up something that learn I'm pretty sure uh, it's a good series I've heard a lot of good comments about it Christo and Tuayuda will be meeting at 1 o'clock today. And then later on this afternoon um, is uh, game night at 4 o'clock and host a number of games. I think uh, Pat Grimius and his son were making barbecues for a little, a little snack that you can have uh, during the midst of your festivities. So uh, that's later on this afternoon at 4 o'clock. You're all welcome to join right in the fellowship hall. And I have to mention something about the book club that's coming up. We've been promoting this, I think, since February, but now, finally the, the time is here. And Gretchen just wanted you to know this is a, it's a fascinating book. It probably takes only about four hours to read. You can download it from Kindle. Or if you need a copy of it, please contact her as soon as possible. She'd love to have any and all who can come on Tuesday night at 7 o'clock to discuss the book. Uh, they're welcome to join with, with them. Uh, I've gotten two notes on what's going on Wednesday. Uh, these, these two notes right here. Uh, for, and both of them talk about spaghetti, and none of them talk about the new pastor. <laughs> but I think it's, I think it's a given. Uh, it's a great opportunity that you have to, to meet the new pastor, Pastor John. Uh, I don't know that he'll be there exactly at 5 o'clock, but that's the time they're going to start uh, serving the food. Uh, the, the fare is uh, spaghetti, garlic toast, tossed salad, bars for dessert, uh, serving at 5 o'clock. So you're sure welcome to join with um, them, and it'll give you an opportunity to kind of get a feel for Pastor John, and uh, he's looking forward to it. He's going to be meeting with some of the leadership teams throughout the uh, afternoon and some of the staff members as well, so you're welcome to to join with him. I will not be here that day, and that's probably a good thing. I'm going to be actually meeting with, with John on Monday uh, to talk about a couple of things regarding ministry and, and all of that. I'll give him the inside scoop. <laughs> uh, also on Thursday, uh, through the Bible in a year, we'll be at Phileos. Uh, you're invited to join with uh, a discussion group, um, and I think Gretchen is going to be leading that if she hasn't found somebody else. Uh, I, I will be uh, gone next week. Um, in Rochester, I have a couple of meetings and a couple of things that I have to take care of uh, in that city. Um, there will be a couple of things this week regarding some, some meetings. Uh, no missions team, no finance, no PSPRC will meet this week, but the, the uh, church council will meet via Zoom on Thursday night at 5.30, and that link has already been sent out to you. Lastly, the uh, community kids camp coming up. Um, in, in June, the second week, and you, it's not too early to register or to find out if you can help. Uh, it's going to be located over at the First Lutheran Church right across the street on those uh, uh, three days, four days that are listed there. So uh, uh, get, get your kids, your grandkids, nieces, nephews signed up. All right, uh, it's time to worship. So let's uh, turn in our, our hymnals to page 367, and we'll join in the song, He Touched Me.
shackled by a heavy burden, neath the load of guilt and shame. Then the hand of Jesus touched me, and now I am no longer the same. He touched me. my soul. <coughs> Something happened and now I know he touched me and made me whole. Since I met this blessed Savior, since and made me whole. I will never cease to praise him. I'll shout it while eternity rolls. He touched me. my soul. Something happened and now I know he touched me and made me whole. Let's join together in our call to worship. Turn to Christ who calls us here. Place your trust in God, who protects our lives. Lean into spirit as we worship in spirit and truth. Let's join together as we rise and sing number 318, Christ is Alive. alive let Christians sing the cross stands empty to the sky let streets and homes with praises ring love drowned in death shall never die Christ is alive no far remotely high untouched unmoved by human pains but daily in the midst of life our Savior in the Godhead reigns in every insult alive and comes to bring good news to this and every age till earth and all creation ring with
with joy, with justice, love, and grace. And now, friends, let's join together as we share in our opening prayer with one voice. We begin by praying together. God of miracles and truth, bless us as we gather for worship with the power of your Holy Spirit. Reveal your presence in the midst and open our hearts and minds to receive your miraculous love. Strengthen our faith this day that we may go forth as witnesses of your miraculous love. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. Let me invite the young Christians to come forward for a moment with them. All the little children of the world, red, yellow, brown, black, and white, they are all precious in his sight. Jesus loves all the children of the world. Better late than never. How y'all doing today? How many of you uh, remember what happened earlier this week and saw this? What, what happened this week? A total eclipse. It did. Totally. And did you see it? Out in the sky or just on TV? You saw it in the sky. Even though it was a little cloudy, you must have saw, what, saw it when one of those... It opened up just a little bit. And did you have to have special glasses to look at it? Was it cool? Was it neat? Yeah, it was. I, I didn't get a chance to really see it because I was, first of all, working in the office, but we did look out once, and I didn't really get a chance. I saw the sun up there, but I couldn't tell. There were too many clouds in my way. But I did, I did find a picture of it, and somebody took a picture like this. I thought that was a, a cool picture because you could see the, the sun's rays uh, spinning off of it and kind of looks kind of kind of neat kind of different um, and and I was just wondering uh, as you take a look at at, at that isn't, isn't it a good thing that the sun always shines because you know in some places where where this went it we got totally dark and if it didn't if, if if we didn't have the sun to shine it would be it would be dark out wouldn't it all the time wouldn't just be like night it would be night all the time well, today you're going to hear a story about how the, how the disciples were, again, surprised that they saw Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, and he, he just said to them, he said, why, are you, why do you doubt? Why do you not believe that I have risen from the dead? And so he said to them, he said, take a look at my hands. And so they did, and, t and his feet, because they had, he had the nail marks in there, but he still was, was in this new resurrected body, right? And, and what happened after that was he asked them for some fish to eat. And so he gave them some fish. Now, now ghosts don't eat fish, last time I heard. So here they were, they, they, they saw and they believed because of what he had done. Um, sometimes we can, we can see the sun, but things get in our way. And maybe we don't see it as well as we should. And we can get it into a darkened place because of that. You know, um, so in order to see the Son of God, the Son S O N, we just have to keep our hearts and minds open, and not allow anything to block out what Jesus is doing for us or, or how He has taught us. Okay, so we'll pray for that. Okay, let's pray. Lord, we're grateful for Your Son Jesus, what He brings for us. When we pray that you, we would always be able to focus on Him, to be able to see His light, that He can show us the path. We pray it in Jesus' name, amen. Now, in the surprise box over there, there's a surprise for everybody. It's all the same, so you can just take one and go back to your seats. Thank you.
Friends, if you'll take note on the back page of your worship folder, you'll see a host of names of persons that are listed there that we need to keep in our prayers this week. And certainly, that isn't the, the, the cumulative list. Uh, others, we know of others that we want to uh, keep in our prayers. For example, um, you want to make sure that you keep uh, Denny Colander and Nancy Gallen in your prayers. Uh, both of them are dealing with being diagnosed with COVID, and uh, so they are sequestered at home. We want to keep them in our prayers. Uh, we want to keep both Pam and um, her daughter Alyssa in prayer. They're kind of dealing with the same kind of issue with a kidney stone, and so uh, this next week they're both going to try to get those things resolved. So we want to keep them in our prayers and. My understanding is that Dorothy Sietzma may be returning home tomorrow after having a short recovery stay at South Shore, so she's looking forward to that. Um, there may be other names that, that you have in your heart, and so let's, uh, let's bring all of these to the Lord as we pray, shall we? Let's pray together. Most holy God, we are... So grateful for this time of worship and this on this beautiful spring day. We come from uh, many different places and different walks of life, and, and here we are, uh, ready to hear once again your word of hope to be refreshed by meeting with friends and family and to perhaps even meet a stranger or two, uh, to be introduced once again to your word of hope. These are all things that we look forward to do uh, during worship. But there's always those, those little surprises in life, Lord, where worship sometimes gives us something we didn't expect. And so we pray, Lord, that you would open our hearts to the surprise of whatever it is that you have in store for us today. We lift up those in our community who are dealing with health issues. We pray for their safety and their well-being their complete recovery. We've named them in our hearts already, Lord. We, we know that you know who they are. We ask that you would be with those who are in the healthcare industry, and we are grateful for what they do and to try to keep us in, uh, in well-being each and every day. For those who serve in the military, we thank you for the gift of, of freedom that they preserve and it's never more precious than it is in these days. We know that even in the Middle East right now, there's more things that are going on that are challenging and different countries are in conflict with one another. We do pray for peaceful resolution, Lord, but we, we know that it requires people to listen to your will and to your way. And we just ask that they would open their hearts should that be a part of your plan. We thank you for our schools and for the teachers and leaders. And we pray for them as they uh, wind up the, the school year with another month or so of, uh, of classes yet. Please be with the students, especially those seniors who are preparing for uh, a new chapter of life. We pray that you would keep all of them safe this week. It's a new week. And we pray, Lord, for the, for the area churches in our region and for their pastors. Especially today, we lift up the congregation of the American Lutheran Church who will be looking for a, a new pastor now that Pastor Ann has announced her retirement. We pray for her and for her family as they, they move on to another chapter of life. And we just ask that you would be with the, their congregation in discernment as they search for a new leader. 
All of these things, Lord, we bring them to you. In the name of Jesus, he is the one who taught us to say the prayer using the words, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. This is how he taught us to pray by saying together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, friends, the, uh, the text for today, you'll find it on page 1551, 1551. Uh, this is in the older uh, Quest Bible. The newer ones might be around there. We're in, we're in Luke chapter 24, and we're going to be reading starting from verse 36. And they say B, which means the first part of that verse we can kind of ignore and begin where it, it says uh, Jesus himself stood among them. So we'll read from there down to verse 48. Join with me if you, if you will, if you are comfortable, uh, otherwise follow along or just listen. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they were still did not believe because of joy and amazement, he looked at the, asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, please uh, join with me in a short prayer. <clears throat> Lord, what's the temperature of our belief this morning? It's something that each one of us, as we search in our hearts, we may try to fathom what that temperature might be are we are we on fire for you and your presence or is it just a more moderate thing or is it perhaps even where we're out in the cold pray lord that whatever that temperature may be that through your spirit you would rise us to a new level not only of understanding as you did with the disciples, but a new level of joy, excitement, peace, and contentment. And I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, that they would be acceptable to you, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Well, a person really had to be sequestered this last week to miss what transpired across the nation the total eclipse of the sun captivated millions of people. People would drive hundreds of miles to get a closer glimpse at what has been called a once-in-a-lifetime event. To see the moon totally engulf the sun for just a few moments, causing darkness, a, a drop in temperature, animals wondering about their nocturnal schedule, and people weeping and becoming very emotional at this unique and rare occurrence. At least that's what I saw. 
I spoke with John Nordell a month or so ago about his participation in this event. John and his family are huge fans of this kind of event. This is the second time that he's been able to drive to a, a total eclipse of the, of the sun. Uh, they reserved hotel rooms in Indiana just to get closer to this celestial experience. So they drove the, the 10 plus hour drive or so, whatever it was, to get front row seats to the view that only a few could get. And yet thousands of people made the trek to gain the glimpse to be moved by this event that occurs only once in an area about every 100 years. That's why you have to travel to go and see it. The next total eclipse of the sun won't be visible again from the contiguous United States until August 22nd of 2044. I'm glad I could see you busily writing that down right now. Uh, totality will only occur over North Dakota. And that's a, just a hop, skip, and a jump away. However, the next total solar eclipse with a coast-to-coast -coast path spanning the lower 48 states will occur on August 12th of 2045. I'm thinking I'm, I'm not sure if I'll be able to make either one of those events. I mean, perhaps. You never know. So, Pastor Darren, uh, what does a total eclipse of the sun have to do with the text from Luke's Gospel, where Jesus shows himself to the disciples and demonstrates that he is real by having a bit of fish to eat, and giving the disciples a charge that they are to be witnesses of the things that Jesus has taught them. Well, my friends, if you're asking me that question, that is the question of the day. What do these things have in common? Well, the Christian church has gathered weekly for the last couple of centuries now. And every week, the benchmark assembly of the Christian church is worship. It's the number one thing that the church does. And sometimes the worship is good, and sometimes it's a little short of uplifting, but still we gather. Sometimes the singing or the music is inspiring, sometimes it is not. And I know there are times when I know that the sermon message doesn't hit the mark. Trust me, I know. And there are such Sundays when I even wonder about the entire worship experience when I think maybe it's fallen flat, and yet somebody will come up to me and say, that was just what I needed. And I'm thinking, I missed something. Well, just like a celestial event that attracts all of humanity, we have to know this. Something is always going on in worship that is far bigger than any one of us. The Spirit is moving among us as we gather, working wonders in our lives, bringing peace to those who need peace and healing to those who are hurting. So in today's Gospel lesson, we have to remember that this was written 50 or so years after the resurrection of Jesus. So obviously Luke felt it was important to include this particular incident in the account of Jesus' life. And this is a story of a, of a number of different gatherings where something extraordinary happened, Jesus appearing amidst the disciples. And on the surface, it seems like just one of those ordinary appearances. Jesus appearing before his followers several times after the resurrection. And they're, they're uncertain, those who are there. What else is new? Uh, they, the text tells us that they were startled, they were terrified, thinking that they had seen a ghost. And what makes this moment extraordinary is just this. Even though Jesus tells them to check his hands and check his feet, and see that he is still in the flesh, that he is real, flesh and bones. They are still disbelieving, the text says. According to the joy and the amazement now, they, they do add. So Jesus asks if they have anything to eat, which they do. They give him some broiled fish. He took it and he ate it in their presence, something which ghostly spirits do not do, ghostbusters notwithstanding. Now, can we even understand how remarkable that moment is for all of humankind? That particular moment. Because just days earlier, Jesus was dead, buried, seemingly gone for all time. 
Now here he is, appearing and walking and talking and now eating fish, doing all of the things in this new and perfectly resurrected body that is available to each one of us. This is a once-in-a-lifetime celestial happening. And every time that we gather for worship, this event shapes our understanding of who we are. This under, it, it shapes who we want to be. And it gives us the promises that we are given right in front of us. This moment closes off the darkness of this world and offers every single person the diamond effect. Did you, did you catch that diamond effect with the solar? What, it just exploded. We get the diamond effect of the light of everlasting light in our lives. Amen? I mean, how is it that we can even bother to look past this moment and come to worship with a less than excited attitude? Every Sunday, we are gathered to be reminded of the power of Jesus' death and resurrection. And we continually need to be reminded of these events because they, it gives meaning to our lives. We place this cross in front of us, which has been here for, for ever since this sanctuary has been built, this magnificent cross as a reminder to us. Every single time, his death is right up front. We cannot ignore it, what he has done. We celebrate his supper with the elements that he taught. We baptize our children with water, with the words asking God to pour out your Holy Spirit. Bless this gift of water, those who receive it, to wash away their sin, to clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ. Don't miss this part. Don't miss this part. They may share in his final victory. They may share in his final victory. There it is right there. We're witnesses to those things. And these are the events that, that as we gather week after week after week, these are the events that we are called to bear witness to. Now, I don't want to take anything away from this once-in-a-lifetime moment. I was excited about it, just like everybody else. A solar eclipse, there's nothing like it, people say. Nothing wrong with that, I tell them back. But I also wonder, what would it be like? What would it be like if we approached every single worship service from a position of joy, peace, and contentment? Because this is a once-in-a-lifetime universal gift. Jesus has overcome death, offers that same gift to us if we just confess our sin, accept him as Lord and Savior, receive him into our hearts. Considering that, how does our worship each week not reflect this extraordinary promise? Well, it ought to. And trust me, I'm not trying to shame anyone into feeling guilty about maybe being preoccupied about other things when you come to worship during Sunday morning. Because I have to own my own part in this. Truthfully, I, I know that I have moments when I get caught up in other things and I miss the central piece of the gospel message. And there, there have been days in my past where I know I haven't been my, my best on Sunday morning. And you've probably noticed that too. <laughs> I'm supposed to be the leader. I'm supposed to be able to model this excitement to everyone who comes in and attends. And, and sadly, here's what happens. My humanity just gets in the way of that. It, it, it's not an excuse, it's just that it happens. My humanity gets in the way. I ask for forgiveness for that. You see, the, the power of our gathering, it really becomes the most real to us when we care for one another. Because that's when, we, that's when we discover who we really are. We are the incarnation of Jesus to those who gather around us in worship, but also to those who are in our daily walk. I mean, how we speak to one another, how we treat one another with dignity, with respect, reflects our willingness to be the example that Jesus has set for us as to how we act toward one another. It's, really, it's like the statement that I know you've heard before that, that sometimes the only time that people will see Jesus is within you or me. We gather so that we can experience that love from one another to confess the times when we have failed to live in that love and to hear the words of forgiveness so that we can, we can go out there and we can try again. And we do. We do try again and again and again. And, and sometimes we're successful at it and sometimes we're, we're not. 
because our humanity gets in the way. As Jesus came among the group of disciples who were startled and, and terrified, he, he comes among us who are sometimes startled and terrified as well. And he gives us this word. Peace be with you. We gather every week. We bracket all that we do within the gift of peace. Many churches begin to worship with the, with the, with the words, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I, I know many of our pastors, they start their, their message off like that. We conclude worship by asking the Lord to be with us as we venture out into the world. For me, it's, it's that little benediction story that I share that you all wait for, don't you, in some ways? It's, it's just worship. It, it, it matters why we gather. Okay, okay, so sometimes what we offer during the time of worship isn't very exciting because, you know, we live in this digital world where we're conditioned by, by things that are just ex ex exciting and, and blown up and all the graphics are wonderful and marvelous and the music is, is exceptional, all those kinds of things. And, and we're up against all of that because that's what you watch out there. That's a challenge. But sometimes what we do here is a very powerful experience. I noticed it today. Did you notice it? After, after even the choir was done singing its song, nobody wanted to clap. You know why? Because the song touched your heart. You didn't know if you should clap or not. And that was okay. It was really cool to, to hear you be uncertain about that for just that moment. But that's what happens in worship. The surprise is always there. And, and it's a time to rem that we received a reminder of what God has not only done for us in the past, but what God promises to do for us today and the assurances of the promises for tomorrow. I mean, you can come to, to worship because of the pastor, or you can come to worship in spite of the pastor, whatever it is, but sometimes, and, and I know I've heard this, sometimes we come because I want to hear that benediction. Darren, you got to give me that little story so I can go out in the world. But the important thing is, it's not really all of that. It's this. We need to come because we know God is at work in our lives. God is busy showering us with love and grace, and we just have to open our hearts to see that. We know that God is promising us this much-needed peace, just like the way Jesus came in. And this is a place that we know that we can receive that assurance, or at least we ought to, that, that God's peace be with you. Amen? John Nordell, when I was talking with him on the phone, I called him after the eclipse was over, and I'm sure he was basking in the, in the, in the euphoria of the moment. But he told me that the ecliptical experience was, um, and these are his words, I, I was writing down as, as fast as John would allow me to do that. It was awesome because of, it was not some man-made thing, but something that happened because, uh, again, these are John's words now, he's an electrician, the cosmic forces which God put into orbit well before the time began happened in an orderly fashion. And, in, and man had nothing to do with that. And he, he ruminated further on what would our lives be without the sun. And then he thought, and when he said sun, he was, I wasn't sure if he was referring to sun, S-O-N, or sun, S-U-N. I have a feeling that because of his, uh, his experience, he was talking about both. What would our lives be without the sun? Don't even want to think about it. Don't even want to think about it. Because there's nothing like it. There's nothing like having a relationship with the Lord of light and life. I mean, to me, that is a marvelous celestial moment. And every moment in, 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 that we can experience this, every second that we are alive, every moment, uh, eternity is, is right there in front of us. And I pray that, that, that when you come to worship, you're going to be reminded every single time of this precious gift and that is offered to every single person, a gift that is so smashing that it shatters any fears that we may harbor in our heart and that it destroys any uncertainties that we may have about how much the Lord God loves us and grants us the peace of mind that we can positively, positively affirm that there is just nothing like it on this earth. Nothing. There's nothing like it. And to that, I'm waiting for you to say,
Let's pray together. Lord, we are grateful to be reminded of the power of the resurrection and what it means for us, not just some lofty promise that's out there that occurs for some, but for any who believe, any and all everywhere, who hold in their heart that you are Lord and Savior and that we will strive to walk faithfully each and every day. And if we fail, we know that forgiveness is there. Repentance and forgiveness of sins. You told, you told the disciples that many times. It's not that, that we don't have to be perfect, which we don't, but you are made perfect in us. And that's a gift like none other. Help us to receive that gift as we strive to walk faithfully each and every day. And we lift this up in the name of Jesus and all the children of God said, Amen. Friends, so thankful for the way that you faithfully give throughout the year. And uh, the offering plates are in the back. If you want to leave your offering, you can sure do that today. Let's join together as we rise and sing number 95. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy God, we are so grateful for the many blessings that we have received and the way that you've charged us to take care of them. And we pay our bills, we celebrate, we, we, we spend on things that we, we enjoy, and we thank you for that, and we also give. And we thank you for that opportunity as well. So bless the gifts that we give today. No matter how big or how small, they come from our heart. And we pray that others would come to know your heart and your amazing grace. Bless these gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. Our final hymn is number 474. Precious Lord, take my hand. my 
feet hold my hand take my hand precious Lord lead me home it was a sight to behold car this morning I was driving to the church office about quarter to seven the sun was brightly shining brightly shining and there's something about the brightly shining sun that just kind of gets you going ready for the day ready for whatever this day brings yeah it was a sight to behold the sun brightly shining in your heart? In my heart? We are witnesses of these things. So let's take that brightly signing shun of the heart that Jesus is in and show it to the world. Go in peace and may the God of peace be with you. Amen?